All right, here we go. 421, Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor. Sikkim 365 Radio, Craig, Paul, I'm David Smoke, and uh, Armstrong, Emma, and Jack in the studio today running the mothership. So uh, I, I saw the note that uh, Nikki Cowan has retained Jeremy Hefner, bringing him back as strength and conditioning, including uh, that was a part of the previous staff. It's, it's kind of a, you do it slowly but surely. Uh, how in behind the scenes, Mac, do you feel like it's going as she formulates her staff, and how huge was it that you kept Jeremy Hefner as a part of the women's basketball program? Yeah, I mean, I think behind the scenes, um, you know, everything is is going, you know, extremely well. Um, you know, I I don't know that I would say better than than anticipated because we we anticipated it it going really really well with with Nikki as as the the head coach and you know the the early signs um, she's she's doing all of the right right things for the right right reasons and you know keeping keeping jeremy um i think you know provide some consistency and and um you know the the, the student athletes are our, our current players i think had you know great great confidence in jeremy and and um and uh belief and you know really good relationship jeremy's done a, a great uh, done a great job of, of forming you know really really good relationships with with the current current roster so um you know all of that is is positive and and uh and speaks well to both i think nikki and and jeremy mac what's the line of when you have a coaching change of keeping some people and some people going and and, and try to navigate that with with the, with a new coach who obviously wants some of their people here too yeah, it's a great question, Paul. It's it's uh, you know, there's there's no exact science to it. Um, I think it's some some gut, it's some some feel. Um, you know, there's some some nuance to it. Um, you know, I, I think you know one, it's about you know more than anything who you, who who can you trust? Um, you know, uh, who who's able to, to, to buy into, you know, your your vision, um, who's got, you know, really, really solid and, and um, you know, uh, really, you know, depth, in-depth relationships with, with the current, you know, student athletes and, and maybe even some, some other staff. And so, um, you know, I, I think, you know, Nikki's got great wisdom and, and, um, you know, she's right in the middle of that process of trying to, trying to, you know, siphon through all of it. And, um, and I think, you know, again, up to this point in time has done a, has done a, a, a great job. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that it requires is a, a lot of listening, um, you know, in the, in the beginning and, you know, um, I think it can be overwhelming because, you know, you, you've got a lot of voices, you've got. Um, the athletic director's voice who, who uh, seems to always have an opinion. You have the, the sport program administrator, you've got the student athletes, you've got, you know, other staff members. And so just a lot to, to work through, but, um, uh, she's, she's done a great job doing that and, uh, will continue to do that. Mac, your men's tennis team, a 4 nothing win over Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Saturday, 4 nothing against Oregon on Sunday at the Hurt Tennis Center. And uh, now they'll square off here in a few days with Ole Miss out in Orlando. Your thoughts on Michael Woodson and men's tennis uh, keeping the winning going this past weekend? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, done a, he's done a great job. Obviously, we, we lifted the, uh, the interim tag and you know, we, by the way, we had actually made that decision prior to, um, you know, clinching a, a three-way tie of the, the Big 12 regular season and then winning the, the conference championship. But, uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really proud of Mike. I'm really proud of ESOC and, and just, you know, our entire tennis program, our, our young men that had to go through transition. And, uh, you know, it's a great example of them staying together. Um, and, you know, now, you know, entered into the, the NCAA tournament as the, as the number one ranked team. And, uh, you know, I think the number two, two overall seed. So as you mentioned, hit it, heading to Orlando, you know, facing a really, really good old Miss team on, uh, on Monday. 
in uh, in the round of uh, in the round of uh, sixteen. So we'll we'll see how they how they do, and um, certainly wishing them the best. But um, you know, Michael's done a Michael's done a, a great job leading leading the program this year. How much have you paid attention to what's going on with Hartford and their men's basketball program? The transition the administration made that they will start a transition. It takes about three to five years to go Division Three. We've had John Gallagher on this show many times. He loves Baylor. Scott Drew, I know they knocked him out. That was the team that lost. But how much have you paid attention to that, and how rare is that to go the other way? Yeah, you know, um, I, I really haven't. You know, other than you see it coming across the ticker and you're just like, wow, um, I wonder wonder what's behind that and, and, and why. Um, I haven't been able to, to, to read anything, but, um, you know, certainly, certainly interesting. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's a, you know, a decision based on economics or, you know, um, you know, university support direction of, 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 of university. I have no idea, but, um, you know, we, we obviously have great respect for that program and they've done a, they've done a terrific job there and, um, you know, just wish them the best with, with, uh, with the transition they're making. Mac Rose, director of athletics from Baylor with us on Sikkim 365 radio, Craig. No, go ahead guys. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Mac, uh, with the, Mark Emmert uh, mentioned the other day that the NCAA is now going to have to kind of get a little more proactive on name, image, and likeness with July 1st laws going into effect in states like Florida, Georgia, uh, I think California as well, uh, uh, that, you know, they're going to have a competitive advantage. Do you think the NCAA can get something done for this year by August 1st when the season starts so that, you know, schools in, in seven states out of the 50 don't have a competitive advantage over states whose, uh, you know, legislatures haven't passed it yet. Yeah, you know, I, I do, Paul. I mean, I think there's a really good framework right now of proposed legislation that we thought we were going to vote on in, in January. And, and then it was postponed because of, you know, what what uh, what will the federal government do? You know, the, the, the different states, um, the uh, the Department of Justice letter to to the NCA, you know, paused and and then you know certainly, you know, um, the Supreme Court and and the Austin case. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised, Paul, at all, <clears throat> if if there isn't something done prior to the July one date and uh, and those states. Um, you know, that's that's something that you know the, the Division One Council can can vote on and then. Um, you know, uh, pass and then, and then it needs a uh, approval of the, uh, of the board of governors is, is my understanding. So I think that can be done in a, in a, in a short time, time frame. Um, you know, you mentioned the different, the different states going into effect on, on July one. And, you know, if you have the, the four or five, you know, six states, you know, now, now all of a sudden you, you get into this, this area of just, you know, chaos. And, and so some states, you know, the minority of states with, with name, image and likeness legislation, um, the rest of the states without it, um, you know, Texas, um, supposed to, I believe it's September one for us. So, um, there's a, there's a lot going on, but, but I do think we can, the NCA can get there. Now, how does that, how does, you know, I, I think the most interesting question for, for me at least is, um, let's, let's say, Hey, the NCA passes the, the proposed name, image, and likeness legislation. And we, we now have it in play by, by July, July one. Um, what is the role of the federal government? Does, does the federal government still come in and, and create, you know, uh, their own name, image, and likeness legislation? Now, again, we, we thought that that was going to happen, maybe not by July 1, but we, we certainly have signs that that is going to happen and, and that it would preempt all of the state, uh, state name, image and name, image and likeness laws. But then how does that coincide and how does that exist and work with, work with the, uh, with the NCA, you know, legislation if it, if it, if it is passed? And, and so I'll, I'll be interested to see how, how that, how that plays out. Mac, the, uh, the, the 
football non-conference schedule, I think you guys are locked up for the most part over the next few years, but there are a couple of openings here and there. How much is that constantly a work in progress to fill a gap or two in the next, let's say, five years or so? Um, it is. Um, you know, we. I'm trying to remember smoke because it's um, it's a good question. But I, you know, I would. Time has, has got a got a way of just passing by really really quickly. But but I would bet that if you looked at my calendar, within the last two months, maybe three months, you know, that Marcus Sedberry and myself and, and Coach Aranda and uh, Dennis Polian sat down and, and had a scheduling meeting and had conversations about about those openings. And, you know, since since that time, it was, you know, Air Force um, mm -hmm. and um, working on some some other things. But um, we we try to do that, um, you know, maybe, you know, once once a quarter, um, just you know, make sure that we're grounded, make sure that we're, we're all on the same page Is is there, is there anything, anything out there? But, uh, yeah, we're, we're still working on a, on a few things. You, you said air force. I said air force. Yes. You, so we're, you, we're in the process of, of looking at something with them. So, okay. 21, 22 and 23 look like they're locked in for right now. And then it gets to be a little bit open with a couple of games of the, the three years after that. But, um, now, the football capacity, you know I'm never going to let this one go, but I, I know you've kind of <laughs> mentioned that. Uh, where, where is that right now? What do you When they kick off, when you guys open up against, I guess, Texas, no, is, uh, uh, Texas Southern, how many, what's the percentage guess from you that you'll have at capacity at McLean Stadium? Yeah. I'm going to answer this the exact same way I've answered it the other 10 times you asked me. Um, but um, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. I, you know, I really believe this will be no less than, than 75%. And, you know, probably different than the last time you you uh, you asked me. I, I think it's trending toward toward 100%. All right, and, so, uh, okay. I, I probably feel better about 100% than I did, you know, Two weeks ago, there's you know there's still some things to play out. You know this is this is mid May and you're not picking up until you know the, the first of September. Um, so there's there's still some things to to to, to evolve. But um, you know I, I do feel I feel very strong about no less than seventy five percent, and uh, I, I feel better than than I ever have about you know potentially one hundred percent. At some point in July, it looks like you guys will start to have your ticket renewals available for men's and women's basketball. What do you think winning the national championship will mean? And also with the new coach, obviously with Nikki Collin and what it means for women's basketball. Is that something that you're excited about? What kind of reaction you'll get in July? Yeah, I, I am excited. You know, when we when we think about, you know, just potential for us and, and growth, um, and, and revenue growth and and look I mean you know college we all know this college college athletics isn't isn't getting any any cheaper um, it just continues to, to get more and more expensive and we've got to find ways you know to, to continue to be be relevant and you know we've talked about it we don't we don't need to have the highest or the largest budget in in the conference we don't and um, but we we need to have something that gives us a chance, and and then we're gonna we're gonna do the very very best job that, that we can do, um, being really really efficient with with the money that that we we do have. And so um, basketball um, is a is a sport where you know we have talked about internally that there's there's a lot of room for growth in terms of that that revenue ceiling, and it's. And it's not necessarily, you know, increasing ticket prices. It's more about just, you know, selling more more season tickets, getting people more more interested in it. You know, are there some different ways to think about it and doing it? Um, you know, smoke because it's um, basketball is different. Both men and women are different than than you know than football. Um, we know the number of games, and then you know the the hardship. On, on the basketball is a number of, of weekday games. And when you have, you know, season ticket holders that live two hours away, three hours away, you know, 
how how easy is it for them to, to come to games on the weekday. And so I think for us, everything's on the table, trying to think through that and uh, and how do we, we better maximize, um, you know, ticket sales in, in both men's and women's basketball. We, we've got some – We've got some some room for growth there. That's that's for sure. By the way, I just had a, a former brigadier general retired uh, Air Force. Is that is that something that's been released yet, or is that something that they've been playing Air Force since nineteen seventy seven? Is that something that you can tell us officially what year? I can't tell you. I can't tell you what year, but it is something officially that that uh, that I can talk about in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, a home and home. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. Mac, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor. In fact, Craig just put it up there. Mac Rhodes says football program working well, through conversations. I just, well, okay. I just took it down because now it's not even correct because now he's saying it's official that they will play, so I have to reword it. So give me a moment here to, to reword what he just corrected because I said, although nothing's official, and he just said, well, it's official. So, yeah. but he yeah, didn't I'll give us the year. Like, didn't give us the year. Uh, that's what they're. I guess probably that's the final details. Yeah. You got yeah. home and home, and yeah, yeah. All right. Well, they have their non-conference games locked up, and, and but it looks like the next opening. And Craig put this in 2024. They have Utah on the road, and that's it for right now, as far as their future games. So that's where we are. So Craig, get that done, and we'll all retweet it. And uh, that's that's a nice little nugget. Your th- I love that, Craig. Your thoughts about Air Force? I think it's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, it's it's a you know solid program. I think anytime you can bring in the service academies, that uh, that is always a good thing. I like seeing teams play the service academy, um, and you know they need to fill out there. As I'll put out in a second, if I can think about how I need to finish out this tweet, uh, they think their first opening is in 2024 mm-hmm. when they play Utah. So that would make some sense. Um, wouldn't make sense to do it too far down the line, although we do see teams doing that nowadays. But, yeah, I mean, 2024 would seem to, to you know, that that is the most recent opening, and they need two more teams to fill that one out. So that would make a lot of sense, and Air Force Utah wouldn't be a bad non-conference. All right, when we come back, Craig Smokes off the radar. Also today, David Hellman, DallasCowboys.com, will join us at 5, plus some more notes uh sikkim 365 radio the text line open some of you scotty we just got one from you 254-339-1122 matt in dc has also tom just dr uh, uh general uh, turlington just uh text me personally the 254 tj mike e daniel uh and steven all of you thank you 254-339-1122 your text messages craig's off the radar next on sikkim 365 radio 